So as, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, queries are for reading and mutations are for writing. So when you're dealing with some sort of information uh, in DHS2, you can read that information. You can, you can uh, figure out what the name of an indicator is or the name of the current user. Um, but you can also change those things. So uh, if your user has permission to change the name of an indicator, they can change the name of that indicator or the formula that is used to calculate that indicator. Uh, similarly, um, every user has access to their own, to edit the information about their own profile. So that's things like their email address or their phone number or their uh, description or, or their name. Uh, the user can change the, the, those uh, uh, on their own um, user. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do this with data mutations. Um, in the REST API world, that would be a post request uh, to create something, a put request to replace something, a delete request to delete something, and maybe a patch request to, uh, to edit something partially. Um, so the, these are those four kind of uh, HTTP verbs that you might be uh, used to do this uh, with REST APIs just by themselves. Um, and then we can also do the same things through uh, data mutations. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate that quickly again. I'm, these are the slides that I showed before, but let's let's go ahead and um, uh, run this ex this particular example um, in a way that will uh, yeah in in our in our system so that we can uh, see how that works. Uh, to do that, um, I'm going to go back to my app runtime query playground. Um, I have to get zoom out of the way so that I can see it. Um, so you'll see here that we have a mutation uh, option down here on the bottom left. This is a query that I've already written, so I don't want to change that to a mutation, but I can create a new tab, which has a new query. And then if I switch to mutation, since I haven't edited this one, it gives me the, the default, uh, which is to update the introduction of the um, current user. So introduction is kind of like description or, or your, your, your profile. And I'm going to say hello world. So I'm actually going to create a second tab here. And this one's going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close that first one that I had open. I'm going to rename this. Actually, I can rename it. So this is going to be edit current user mutation. This is a handy way to keep track of the um, different queries and mutations that you might be playing around with or, or using, similar to you, what you might do in Postman. Um, and this is uh, view current user. So this is a query. Uh, this, I'll, I'll say query here. Um, so the view current user query, if I click execute, it's going to fetch the name, ID, email, and introduction of this uh, current user, the one that the whoever I'm logged in as. Uh, and you'll see that the name, the the introduction is hello world because I've already run this mutation in the past. Um, but let's go ahead and change that. So let's say, uh, bonjour. Uh, so now we can see if we do this again, we got a response on the right side there. So this is a mutation again. The, the type is update because we're actually replacing something in this uh, me resource. Um, and I'm, I'm changing my introduction to something in French. Um, and I say, uh, if I, now I click, so, sorry, I, I clicked execute here and the response on the right is the whole me resource. That's not the case for uh, a lot of other metadata endpoints, but for the current user, that's what you get as the response to your mutation or your post re uh, put request in this case. Now I'm going to go back to my query and click execute so I can get this uh, query. And I have the, um, the new introduction that came back because it has been edited in, in the DHS2 database. Uh, and now everyone can see my introduction in French if, they, if I would like to. Um, todo el mundo. 
if I wanted it to be front, uh, Spanish, I can do that change again. And now if I run this query again, I get the same thing in Spanish. Um, now, uh, let's talk about some of the other types of mutations that we might uh, try to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close my current user edit and delete or edit and view um, mutation and query. I'm going to create another mutation here. So I'm going to edit this and say this is going to be my create. We're going to create a visualization. So this is going to be a create mutate create visualization mutation. So my resource is going to be visualizations. My type is going to be create. And I need some data for a visualization, but I'm not really sure what, what I need to provide, what, what data I need to give to the visualization's endpoint. So let's go ahead and, and make another query. This is gonna be visualizations. Let's go say view visualizations query. Um, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get all the fields for now, just so that I can see what's, what's there. Uh, ah, visualizations with an S. Um, so our page, uh, we, again, we're, we have 278 visualizations that are saved here. Um, I'm just gonna go and pick one of these. So this one is a type single value, uh, which is a very simple visualization type. So I'm gonna use that one because it's the easiest to, to, um, to use. Um, and I'm going to say uh, visualizations, I'm gonna add an ID here. Just to, just to make this a little bit more simple. So now we don't have a list. Um, did I mistake that? Let's try this again. Oh, maybe I had the wrong, I copied the wrong thing. Okay, so now I have this single value uh, visualization here. Um, and you can see that it's got a lot of different fields. Most of them are empty. Um, it turns out that the only fields that I really need for um, the visualization are, or for a single, sorry, for a single value visualization are name and, and put this on another line, type. So uh, a single value visualization, Technically, this is this should be all that I need for a uh, to create it. Um, obviously, we would need to specify some more information as well to actually be able to use this visualization. So, if we go ahead and find another um, one that isn't one of these test ones, let's try. Let's add a filter. Just going to go ahead and, and demonstrate how to use some of these um, things. Let's say filter type equals single value comma and let's execute that so now i have a list of all of the single value uh, um, single value visualizations in my system um, most of these are all tests which means that there weren't any probably before we started playing around with this, um, but let's see if we did. Let's if we did this instead. I'm going to copy this visualization and say log out. I'm going to log in instead to another system. So I'm going to go to a different. Um, that won't work. I will do this instead. Austin, <clears throat> sorry. Oops. Just in the meantime, yeah. um, Robert asked if, uh, when doing API queries, if there's a way to specify counts of returned objects, uh, similar to SQL um, select count. Uh, yeah. Like that is a very good question. Support. That is a very good question. Um, I don't believe there is a way to do that today. If that's something that's useful for certain applications, that that would be a very good request to make. 
Um, but I don't believe there's a count feature today. There, there might, there might be. Let's let's go ahead and explore this together. Um, I haven't used it myself in in a while. If it's the case, so if we go to docs.djs2.org, um, when you go back to the the main page here, you can click on Develop, Explore Developer Documentation. Click Using the API on the left side here, uh, and then there's a bunch of these different sections. So. This will tell you how to authenticate with the API. It tells you a lot of the things that uh, in much more detail that, that I went over today, um, how to structure periods, all sorts of things like this, um, as well as how to use the, the different um, scheme codes and, and things and paging and filters and fields and translations, lots of lots of information here. Um, let's go ahead and search for count. Let's see if we can figure out what that is. Um, so I know you can do it for events. I don't believe that you can do it for metadata, but we can take a look at that. You can do it for maybe for data elements, some other things. So I think the answer to your um, question would be, uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's supported for metadata endpoints. Um, you can get counts through analytics quite easily, uh, which we're not gonna cover today. We'll cover that in the next workshop. Um, but that is something, if that's something that's quite useful that we could uh, look into um, adding in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and add this here. I'm going to, uh, oh, I don't have, actually, I'm not going to, I'm not going to demonstrate this with in this way. So I was trying to, uh, trying to log into a different server that had, uh, I, I, actually, I will do it just so that everyone can see. So debug.djs2.org with dev. I'm just going to log into this sys, uh, If you, oops. if you have a DHS2 instance and you want to use the data query playground with that DHS2 instance, you have two options. Your first option is to go to system settings as uh, Deborah mentioned before, and you can add this URL Uh, runtime.dhs2.nu. Uh, Slack is in the way. Nope. Nope. You can add that to this list uh, without the slash. The other option, um, and this is uh, maybe getting a little bit off topic, but the other option is to go to the app management app, which you can also use to install your own applications. Uh, go to the app hub uh, and search for um, playground. So we have this data query playground right here. We can install version one. It will install from the App Hub and install it successfully. And then I can actually, this is actually running on my DHS2 instance in, the, in this particular version. Um, and it has uh, the, the, the same tool. Um, but I added this to the cores list. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and run it here um, from debug. Right, um, and now I have this query that we were making before, visualizations. I'm gonna do filter type equals single value. Okay, so here we have some, some real, uh, maybe, Maybe some real ones, maybe not some real ones. Actually, these are all tests as well. But I think maybe they actually work. Anyway, we're just going to create a new test visualization with type single value. Um, that's what we were here to do from the beginning. So let's do create visualization mutation, call it that. This query we're going to call uh, view visualizations query. Create visualization mutation is going to be a mutation, and we're going to do it on the visualizations resource. 
we're going to create a new visualization. And the data that we need, as we mentioned before, is a name. So we're going to call this one, I am not a test. Um, even though it is a test, we're, we're lying here, but that's okay. Um, where, where did we go? In our, if we looked at the, um, the fields that we wanted here, the other one that we wanted was type, and we needed type to be single value. So this is going to create a new visualization called I am not a test, uh, and it will go ahead and do that. So we can see that this uh, was created. We have a, a 201, which means created uh, status code. We also have the ID of the object that was created. Now, if we go back to our view visualization query, we're filtering by type equals single value. Right now there's nine of them before, before I added a new one. Now we have 10. Uh, and you can see this, I am not a test here up at the top. We could also, if we wanted multiple filters, we could make this an array. I'm just demonstrating a lot of different features of uh, data queries and app runtime here. So hopefully it's not too confusing, but we could say display name equals I am not a test. I think this should work. Oh, comma. And there we have our a list of all the, the display name or all the, the visualizations that have a type of single value and are named I am not a test. If we then created another one, so let's go ahead and execute this two or three more times. We can have multiple visualizations with the same name actually in this case. Sometimes that's not the, the case depending on the, the resource that you're talking about. But now we actually have four, five, four different visualizations that we have created that are all called I am not a test. Um, we could also do two, three, four, create that one. And we could change this equal to a dollar I like, um, which means we are going to also receive I am not a test two, three, four. Um, so this is just an example of a create visualization that lets us create a new thing. Um, let's go ahead and look at the, so that last one that I just um, created called I am not a test two, three, four. Uh, ID is T-U-L-E, et cetera. Uh, I'm gonna put that under ID here in my mutation. Um, I'm actually gonna create a new mutation here. I'm gonna call this one edit visualization mutation. Um, resource is going to be visualizations. ID is going to be the ID of the one I just created. Type is going to be update. Um, so I'm leaving that there. Um, in this case, uh, I'm going to use update and I'm gonna say partial true, which means that I'm only going to update a part of the um, uh, the thing that I'm that I'm trying to edit. Uh, I'm going to change the name. So previously it was I am not a test two three four, and I'm going to change it to I am a test. We go ahead and do that update. Uh, actually, this I think partial doesn't work on this visualization. So as I mentioned in the slides, uh, partial only works on certain endpoints. So be be aware of that. So let's go ahead and replace this whole uh, object. We're going to say um, type is going to be single value. Importantly, when you use an update mutation, you have to specify all of the fields. So you should fetch all of the fields before you update them. Now let's do that. We have an okay, 200 res response. Um, and we'll see that if I execute this again, we had five before that start with, I am not a test. Now we only have four because this one says I am a test. So if we say I am a test instead, we get the one that we just edited. Um, so this is how you would do an update mutation. I can also do a delete mutation. So this is going to be delete visualization mutation. And we're going to say visualizations is the resource again. Type is going to be delete ID is going to be that ID that we were using before. Don't need any data for a delete mutation. Um, let's go ahead and delete it. 
Okay, so our visualization, which we uh, previously had here called I am a test, it no longer exists. There are no, um, uh, no visualizations in this list at all. Um, now let's do I am not a test. Let's see which other ones we have here. Let's clean up after ourselves. So we still have four uh, visualizations here. We can go ahead and, and for each of those, put the uh, ID into the visualizations delete query. We've now deleted this one. Let's show that that is gone and do it again. And show that that one is gone. Two more to go. Um, and show that that one is gone. And the last one. And now we're going to delete this last visualization that we created. So now we have uh, looking for anything with display name, I am not a test, nothing is there. And that is all we have. Okay, um, that is a quick overview of mutations. Um, there is an exercise that, uh, Deborah, did you want to introduce the exercise or do you want me to? Uh, yeah, I can introduce uh, the exercises, but before that, uh, there is a question on Slack. Uh, okay. Yeah, so what happens when the resource doesn't support duplicates while using create? Uh, would it update the resource or throw an error? Um, that's a good question. So if you're using a create mutation, so if we go back here and uh, we have this create visualization mutation, um, and we said that name name does, does support duplicates in the case of visualizations. I believe indicators does not. Um, uh, let's let's think of a, an easier way to do this. Actually, uh, so let's see. Let's let's create a, a visualization here called um, I am a, a test single value. We just created one here. I'm going to look for ones that have I am a test. What I'm going to do here to demonstrate this is I'm going to try to use ID in the create. Um, and I think this will throw, throw an error. So ID needs to be um, unique. And here we have a, an error there. So if something needs to be unique and you use a create mutation, you'll get an error response. So in this case, it's a 409 error. It gives you some details um, in the, in the um, object here. So found an object for given reference, but import is, a mode is create. So identifier was UID. Um, means that the UID that uh, we're trying to import here already exists. Um, so you will get an error if you have a unique field that you are trying to update. It won't, it won't update the existing mutation in this, or the existing object in that case. Good question. Uh, 